guys, it's Amanda. I wanted to show you some fun effects that you can do in Photoshop with your bokeh overlays um, to create something a little unique, maybe something on an image that someone would be like, oh my gosh, how did you do that? Um, so this is my bokeh overlay collection, um, which is for sale. You can purchase it at photographerhack.com forward slash bokeh overlays. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up number 33. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and open it up with the 2019. I haven't yet convert it over to 2020. So we're just gonna go 2019. Um, and as you can see, I had already been playing with a bunch of things over here, but I'm gonna start over from scratch to kind of teach you how to do this. Um, so in this image, there's a few things that you can do. Obviously, it's in the shape of a Christmas tree. You would wanna fill in some of this black space, um, or when you place it on your image, you can place multiple ones and move them around where you want the bokeh. Um, so if you wanted to go ahead and fill that in, I can show you how to do that. You can also go ahead and crop it so that it's filled in most of the way. Um, so for example, I could hit C and kind of crop it like this. And that way, at least most of my overlay um, is, going to, uh, is going to have the bokeh in it. Um, but if I wanted to fill this in so that I had a nice, large, you know, vertical image, for example, I could hit Command-J and go over to Edit Transform, which is right here. Um, and I could flip this vertically. Okay, so it's like right there. Um, this is going to help me a little bit. Hit V for move. I'm just going to kind of move this over a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to add a black mask and brush it in. So this is my mask icon here. I'm going to hit uh, Option and then add the mask and then get a white brush. I hit B on my keyboard, white brush selected. My opacity and flow are both pretty good. And so now I can add in some more bokeh up here. Um, so that's something that I can do. And that looks pretty good. I could go in here and move this like to like right here. That might be kind of cool. And you can see the bokeh shape and size is a little bit different, but um, so you can play with that, um, but just kind of showing you how to do that. And then why don't I, I could do the same thing. I could duplicate the layer or I can create another pixel layer. So I'm gonna hit shift. Option, Command, E, I created another pixel, what's called a stamp visible pixel layer here. Um, and then I'm going to transform it and I'm going to go to edit, transform. I'm going to flip this one uh, vertically so it kind of moves over here. And maybe I'll go like that, add another black mask, holding down Option, B for brush, white brush is selected. And then I can fill in kind of over here. Oh, I don't want to do that. Um, so yeah, so that looks pretty good to me. There's a little bit of dead space in there, so maybe I'll go ahead and crop it. I'll hit C to crop. And I just wanna make sure you can see kind of my crazy brush strokes over there. So maybe I'll do something like that. So this would be a great overlay to use. There's so much you can do with this. One really cool thing that you can do is if you have an image with houses in the background, you can actually, um, I would make this smaller. I would transform it so it was smaller, but you can brush on these lights so it looks like a house has Christmas lights on it. So that's kind of a cool thing that you can do. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and let's create another stamp visible pixel layer. Um, all of your filters, you're gonna need a pixel layer to work on. You can't use uh, you can't use filters on any of these adjustment layers. So there's two types of layers, an adjustment layer and a pixel layer. You need a pixel layer. So I'm gonna hit Shift, Option, Command, E. And I've got another little copy right here that I can use. I can even turn these guys off if I wanted to. It doesn't really matter. Um, and so now I'm working with this one. A cool filter that you can start with is going to be your radial blur. So I'm going to go down here to filter blur, radial blur. There's two types of radial blurs, spin and zoom. Let's start with the spin method. So you can see here this preview box allows you to see what the effect will look like um, and it allows you to move the center of the image um, and this is super super helpful if you know the base image that you're going to place this on top of so let's say the base image i'm going to use let's say the subject is in the lower right third um, so I, I don't really want the effect on that area um, and you can play with this amount um, you know, if you want something a little more, a little more subtle, 
if you want something that really gets blurred. Um, but you can always you can always add more. You can definitely take it away, but you can always add more too. So let's just say I kind of like how this looks and I want my subject here. Um, for quality, guys, just keep it at good. No reason to go best. This is an overlay, so no reason to take a long time or create a bigger file size. So just leave it at good. Um, and I'm going to hit OK. And let's see what happens. I think that looks pretty cool. Um, it creates a cool rainbow blurred, uh, you know, spin effect, which is kind of fun. Um, and then when you place this on your base image, you'll mask this off. If let's say you really love this and you'd like to use it on multiple images, um, which again, I would just do this every time based on where the subject was, but you can always remove this middle part. Super simple to do that. I would probably use a curves layer. I would drop down. Whoop, drop it down all the way so it's nice and black. Um, and then what I would do is go in here and Command I to invert. I would get B for brush. And then I would just, you see there's still a little blue speck in there. I can get rid of that pretty easily as well. So I can clone that out if I wanted to get rid of that. Um, so you could do something like that. And then now you can save this as an overlay if you wanted to use this one again in the future. So that's kind of cool. So that's the spin blur. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove these layers here. Um, and then I'm going to, I'll create another stamp visible layer. So let me go ahead and get this guy back up here. I'm going to shift option command E. And let's go ahead and play with a zoom blur. So I'm going to go to filter, blur, radial blur, and now we're going to zoom. I think this looks really neat. And again, don't forget, you can move this around. So let's say your subject is kind of over here. Let's say you want this to be even more pronounced. Um, I'm going to hit OK. And that looks kind of neat. Actually, I, I want it even more. So what I'm going to do is go to filter, see radial blur right here it's gonna add the effect again. Um, so you don't have to go through all of those steps. You can just hit it and it'll do it again. I think that looks really cool. And again, when you're adding it to a base image, you would just mask this off, um, you know, or again, you can create this. Um, I would just use a curves layer and then black that out and then it won't show when you add it. Um, but that's really neat, you guys. I think that could be very cool on your images. So let's see, maybe I'll step back a little bit and go back here. Um, play with these filters. There are so many cool things that you can do here. Um, one of them that I played with was the shape blur. Now my book overlays, I include stars, hearts, and snowflakes. Um, but what you could do is play with these shapes. So this is a fleur de -lis. If you're from New Orleans or you're a Saints fan, this might be one that you would want to play with. Um, it actually creates this shape in your bokeh. I like the shaped bokeh better than using the shape blur, um, but it's interesting. You can play around with it. These are hearts. I think that looks kind of fun. Um, you could use lightning bolts. They look kind of like zigzags, um, little flower shapes. You know, this might work if you're wanting to create a snowflake effect in Photoshop and you've got white bokeh. Obviously, with the colored bokeh, it doesn't look as good. Is it coming? There it is. You kind of can't see it all that great. Um, but yeah, you can use this shape bokeh if you, hey, if you wanted to do pause, that might be kind of fun. I wonder if, you, and you just have to play with this slider to find the radius at which you can tell what it is. Some of my bokeh overlays, the light bokeh is a lot larger, so you'd probably be able to see it a little bit better. So that's just an example. You can kind of play with that. You can do a motion blur. I think the zoom blur is a little bit more fun than that. Um, you can go to blur gallery. Oh, you could do a tilt shift. This would be really fun. So this creates an effect like if you were using a tilt shift, tilt shift lens or like a lens baby um, and if you've never done this before y'all you can use this on any image um, at all so I'm going to move this if I wanted to create a tilt shift effect what I usually do is I want um, and here's here's um, what you need to know the area outside of the dash lines is going to be very blurred the area between the dashed and the solid lines are going to be somewhat blurred, and then the area in the middle is going to be crisp. It won't be applied there. Oop, and I just, I just moved it over. 
So I want it to look maybe something like that. Now this isn't quite blurry enough for me, so I'd go over here and jack that up. See kind of how that looks? Um, and actually I do wanna kind of move that effect, you know, something like that. And again, if I were gonna use this as an overlay, this area in the middle, I would mask out more than likely. Um, but you can kind of play with that. That might be a little too much. You know, and just play with it, whatever, whatever kind of looks good to you. Um, so it kind of has the blurred at the edges, kind of looks like a lens baby. So you could do something like that. Let's see, what else could you do? Oh, there are so many fun things. Pixelate is a really fun one that you could play with. Um, let's go to, let's go to Crystallize. Um, and you could kind of do, this is really fun. See that? Isn't that kind of funky? That's really neat. Now, here's what I learned. This is really fun. Let's say you wanted to create a snow overlay. You could generate a bump map um, with this 3D filter. Watch this, you guys. This is so funny. It's really weird. It does take a while, so hopefully my computer will um, catch up with me. So do you see Do you see this, what's going on here? Um, and you can kind of play with these. Again, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just playing around here. But if I hit OK, check that out. It's like a snow, it's like a snow overlay. Isn't that wild? And you could literally place this on top of an image and it would look like snow. Um, and then again, from there, you could even blur it. So you could go to filter. Let's do a, let's do a motion blur to make it look like it's snowing a little bit more. You know, it looks like rain. You know, something like that. I mean, isn't that kind of funky? Um, all kinds of crazy things that you can do up here. Oh, this was um, distortion. There's filter distort, which is right here. So you can play with some of these here, twirl, zigzag. Let's do a twirl once. Let's do a filter twirl. Um, so I did distort wave. I'm gonna go back to this copy here, get rid of that. Another stamp visible layer. Let's go to filter, distort twirl and see what happens let's kind of oh my gosh that is kind of crazy i kind of love it okay i kind of love that that's kind of wild um so yeah so that is just a quick little tutorial on how you can take your bokeh overlays and really create some wild effects for your images and just remember it's super simple um, i have a video on this um, in my mini course on the ultimate guide to bokeh overlays, but where I teach you how to place them on your images, how to mask and do all that other great stuff too. Um, but that, I mean, that's just kind of fun. Um, and if you don't love it, that's fine. Maybe you just wanna use just a plain old bokeh overlay. Um, but I, like I said, I think my favorite, if I'm being honest, is probably the radial blur, zoom blur. It sh should work. There we go. Um, and again, if you wanted to distort those lines a little bit more, just keep adding it. Just keep doing it as many times as you need to to get the effect that you want. So I hope that was helpful. That was kind of fun and hope you learned something. Just remember, play in Photoshop. Play with all these different things. You never know what you're going to get. I love oil paint. That's a great one to use. Um, not so much for a bokeh overlay, um, but definitely useful in some of your images. There you have it. I hope that was fun and helpful.